In landscape photography, it's often said that no two images are the same. I think this is especially true when you're capturing seascapes. The flow of each swell and how it interacts with its surroundings means that what your camera sees during a long exposure is guaranteed to be different every time. And you, as the photographer and creator of your images, need to think about when to press that shutter release button and the length of your exposure. Creating unique and varied images with your mind's eye. For me, this is the allure of seascapes. We're about five to ten minutes off sunrise and it is a lovely morning for some long exposures here uh, in Binalong Bay. So it's on the east coast of Tasmania at the start of the Bay of Fires as you work your way up towards the north. Now it is well known for its crystal clear waters, white sandy beaches and of course the orange red lichen covered granite boulders as you see all around me. Uh, my first photo is going to be just of that lone tree there straight in front of me and uh, straightforward co composition so uh, let's get straight into it. The scene I've got right in front of me is quite a high dynamic range scene because the sun's rising here, I've got a lot of shadows in my foreground. So what I'll do is I'll have to exposure bracket this scene uh, and I'll do a three bracket exposure, two stops below and two stops above base and then I'll uh, blend that in post so that I don't clip uh, my highlights but I'm lifting my shadows enough here so that uh, I can see beautiful details in my foreground and the beautiful orange red lichen rocks. Although I did exposure bracket my photo, I found that I preferred the results of this single shot that I took. I found it much easier to edit, the colours rendered better and I didn't have any stacking issues, especially with the trees in the background here. Now you may be asking why on earth was I up on that rock? Well, I wanted to achieve separation here between this rock in the midground and the water, but I think ultimately I needed a crane to achieve that. On to my next composition, and I was having a bit of fun skipping around on the rocks out there. low tide but the high tide's coming in and uh, there are a few strong waves so I've got to watch out for that. Uh, second composition I am now perched down low I've still got this unique shaped tree in my foreground and what I'm going to do is capture the waves as they come in so they'll provide some interesting foreground interest. Now I can slow down my shutter speed with my my Nissi polarizer it's not slowing it down enough to capture some of the, well to freeze some of the motion in the water so I'm going to have to pop my ND filters on and because I've only got uh, magnetic ND filters it's not going to uh, attach to this Nissi screw on filter so what I'm going to have to do is put on my adapter ring now with my polarizer turn on I'm going to put my six stop ND on 
and everything is in focus. So this is probably not the ideal way to use this uh, Nissi circular polarizer. I mean, they do have the uh, Nissi V700mm square filter lens kit and uh, it works quite well with that. But I don't have that, so I'll just have to improvise with my current filters and see how that goes. So it's all just trial and error this morning. Even at one second, I, I found that was uh, too slow. So I've bumped up the shutter speed even further. I'm now on a quarter of a second, just waiting for a, a nice wave to come at the right time. The right waves were few and far between, but I never tire of watching and listening to them crash ashore and soaking in the scenery around me. Here I don't mind the misty effect of the flowing water created in this 4 second exposure, but I usually do prefer to see some movement in the water. I'm keen to hear what your preferences are. Here are some photos I took from a similar spot at sunset the night before. You can see the water was a little more dramatic, with each long exposure creating a different atmosphere. position for the morning. Uh, I am now uh, facing in the direction of the sun, so I've got the sun right behind me and I've got this path of granite boulders just snaking its way off with some nice trees framing the backdrop. I've got my circular polarizer on and that should help with uh, creating additional contrast, make the sky pop a little bit and also take the glare off the water. So the sun has well and truly risen but it's still a lovely soft uh, morning light. Unfortunately, there wasn't much happening in the sky at this time, but I'm sure sunset here would be spectacular. All right, folks, I think that's it for this morning. I really enjoyed taking those shots and I hope you enjoyed seeing them and coming along with me uh, on my photo shoot out here at Binalong Bay this morning. I am a little bit hungry, so I'm gonna go grab a bite to eat and do a little bit of sightseeing. I'll tune back in either at sunset or a little bit before then. Uh, and I guess in your world, they'll be a few seconds away. So I will see you very shortly. in Bishano at the moment and just along the shoreline. It's about 45 minutes away from sunset so we still have this beautiful soft diffused light and uh, I've stationed myself just on the edge here with this lovely rock pool in front of me and we've got some uh, granite rocks just leading uh, off into the distance right in front of me. So I've got my Nissi circular polarizer on and I'm wanting to see through to the rock bed underneath and there's some beautiful seaweed and purple corals. Uh, so I'll be using my CPL. I might need to also pop on a six stop ND just to slow down uh, the motion in the water and uh, smoothen it out. So let's take my first shot. While having a tripod meant I could take much longer exposures, I quickly realized I wanted to get down lower and experimented with much faster shutter speeds handheld. A key question to think about when shopping for a CPL 
is whether it affects image quality and sharpness. I can say the Nissi True Colour CPL retains sharpness and details, and there's definitely no image degradation. I'd spotted a composition, which of course meant I had to get into the thick of things. Always happy to have a splash around in the water. We've got some strong swells coming in. We're about, uh, I'd say, 10 minutes off sunset. And with the white fading at the moment, I can get away with about 1 15th of a second. So I'm just focusing on the edge of this uh, path of granite rocks as it's just leading away from me into the horizon there and you can see we're getting some pretty strong swells coming in so i'm finding at 1 15th of a second i'm still getting some good motion there in the water which is uh quite nice it is a high dynamic range scene i'm getting a lot of shadows here cast to my right and uh, just seeing what I can get away with without using a uh, neutral density filter at this stage. So obviously as I'm losing more light I can open up my shutter, slow it right down and uh, slow down the motion in this water a little bit more. There are times when I prefer to capture the incoming water. Capturing the force and the power that's coming at you can be quite interesting. And there are other times when I prefer to capture it receding, particularly on a beach. Now, depending on the length of your exposure, getting your shutter release timing right can be just trial and error. I find it helps to turn my timer off, especially when the water flow is fast and powerful. Unfortunately, my cameraman forgot to change the settings on my camera and the rest of my footage was in slow motion. But it was time to wrap up my shoot anyway, just after I squeeze in a few more shots. That's it folks, I really enjoyed the last few days exploring the east coast of Tasmania and being able to share it with you all. I've also really enjoyed using this Nissi True Colour Nano Circular Polarizer and it hasn't disappointed me one bit. So I hope you enjoyed the video and the images and found it quite helpful. Now there's lots of great CPLs out there, but if you're interested in exploring the Nissi True Colour Circular Polarizer further, I wouldn't hesitate to recommend it at all. I think it is very good quality and I have been pretty impressed by its images and really satisfied generally. So get out there, enjoy your photography, take that shot and I'll see you in the next video. See you later.